Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy to be doing a repotting video with you right now because it is a very dark and gloomy, sad day in Missouri right now. It's been so foggy and cold, but surprisingly enough, we are having some warm days coming up. So thank goodness for that. But I have so much repotting to do. I have to repot some new plants that I got. And ooh, I can use this on my butt while I sit on the ground. I can never repot for very long because my legs just end up hurting, but I've set myself up in a way this time where I can really just like camp out for a while. I mean, it's not like amazing support, but it's better than nothing. <laughs> okay, so also wanted to give a big thank you to Case to Five for sponsoring this video. I have a Case to Five phone on my case. I have a Case to Five case on my phone right now, and I'm gonna be showing you some other fun stuff and talking with you about them in just a minute, but I'm gonna repot a few plants first and then we'll get into that part of the video. Every single time I ever show this mat situation, I get questions about what it is. Like I've been getting a lot of DMs about it as well. So this is a repotting station from Plantfolio and they are sold out through the end of the year and I'm hoping that they'll be making more in 2022, like beginning of 2022 so you can order. But I had a few people ask me um, in my DMs because they wanted to gift this. But unfortunately, they're all done making um, these for the years. But anyway, the first thing I want to do is get this Mammy Eye out of this pot right here. These orchid pots, I've slowly fallen out of love with just because I find it really difficult for the plant to hold moisture for a long time because I'm not sure that the plant is really able to get fully saturated in the first place because there there's so many holes in the pot. So I feel like the water drains out before it even has time to sit in the pot and saturate the plant. So I'm actually going to be putting this plant inside of this pot or I grabbed a different one and trying to sell it or get rid of it or something because I just don't want this plant anymore. It's a Monstera Standeliana. And before you comment asking for it, I'm gonna try to do it locally first. And if nobody wants it locally, I'll put it on my Instagram. So I would prefer to not ship it. So I'm gonna try to do local first. But anyway, yeah, this plant means a lot more to me and this is a useful pot right here. So I'm just going to do a little pot roulette and switch that out. And also it'll be good for me to check on the root system of this baby. So yeah, the root system is looking really good. And just as a reminder, this was a wet stick like, I don't know, a couple months ago. So it really has progressed so much. I'm gonna take a photo of this because that's good promo for the De La Tank soil. That's what it was sitting in and it looks really good. I'm gonna leave the root ball pretty much intact because I don't need to remove any soil because it's relatively new soil. This one will be interesting though, because I have no idea what the roots really look like here. It's definitely thirsty. Now, normally between the uses of pots, I will wash out the pot like with soap and water, but I'm not gonna do that this time just because I don't really feel like I need to. Pop that in the top there. I'm gonna top dress with some fresh soil to get some new nutrients in there. Also, why am I using? I found my repotting cup, by the way. This is from RT1 Home. I also get questions about that. I was just so excited to get back into repotting plants. I've been sharing on my Instagram and my YouTube how for like the last couple of weeks, months, I haven't really been very interested in my house plants. And I feel like, I don't know, it might be like a, a result of coming out of the gardening season and just being kind of done taking care of plants for a while. Um, because once you're done gardening, you're kind of done. And then, you know, when you have house plants and you garden, you're finished with outside and then you have to come inside. You know, it's just a lot, uh, a lot to think about on a constant basis. I think I was just like kind of tired. I'm gonna reuse this soil as well because it wasn't repotted too long ago. Okay, roulette is complete. Now onto the more interesting parts of all of this. So I showed this plant. I, you know what? Actually, I don't think I've shown this on my YouTube channel. I showed it on Instagram. I did an unboxing of this plant and it is a caladium something with an L. I'll put the name on the screen, but it's a plant that I had my eye on for so long. I kept seeing it in botanical gardens and I had no idea what it was. And then I finally saw, 
actually Costa Farms was selling it and I saw their Instagram and I was like, oh my gosh. So I found out the plant ID and then I went to a, a seller on Etsy to find it. And I think it was only like 40 bucks. So honestly, not a bad deal. And it might actually have spider mites. <laughs> Does it? I think it has spider mites right now. I can't tell because it, when it was shipped to me, it was shipped to me with like a bunch of uh, fuzzy stuff and it's like all over the plant, but it's really hard to tell. I've been kind of suspicious. Hold on, I'm gonna check. See, I don't know if that's like a part of the plant or that's spider mites. I really can't tell. Okay, I'm just gonna treat it just in case because you can never be too careful. So what I do to treat spider mites is I just spray it with eight by Bonide and I have a pretty strong mixture. It smells very strong. I don't really go the all natural route anymore when it comes to spider mites because it just doesn't work long term in my experience. I'm not gonna disturb too much down here because I don't, I'm not super like familiar with caladium and I really don't wanna mess anything up. So I'm just loosening up as much as I can and then I'm just gonna pop it in the pot. This pot, by the way, is one that I got very recently. I just opened it actually. It's from Bud and Bowl. They are a pottery artist, a potter, if you will. And I just love their work. I am trying to reserve all of my terracotta pots with lips, like these ones, for my green wall project that I'm doing. So if a plant like would not be good for the green wall, I'm putting it in a pot that doesn't have a lip, like an upright plant basically. So that just looks so cute in there. And I'm gonna treat it for spider mites, like I said, because I'm just a little bit uh, suspicious. Okay, now that that's done, I wanna talk with you about Casetify. So if you don't know who Casetify is, they are a phone case company that makes their cases out of 65% recycled materials and plant-based materials. And their Chitec 2.0 technology protects their cases up to 9.8 feet of drops. So if you saw the last time I talked about Casetify, I dropped my phone literally from like way higher than 9.8 feet and the foam was totally fine. I did that in the ultra impact cases. So those are the cases that have like an extra bumper on the sides. If you're wanting to customize a phone case, you can definitely customize. They have endless print options. This one I put like my name on it. This one I did a little bit more subtle, just like a DLP. And best of all, case device cases are 100% non-toxic and non-hazardous. And they also feature an antimicrobial coating that keeps your cases germ-free, killing 99% of bacteria, which is especially nice as we enter into the dreaded cold and flu season. I'm gonna remove the cushion here and do a drop test. I'm holding it up as high as I can. Whoa! <laughs> and it's all right. No issues with it. Oh my gosh, my background is still pumpkins. I need to change that. If you're looking for a Christmas present for somebody that you love, I would highly suggest Casetify. You're looking for yourself. You got a new phone for Christmas. Whatever it may be, definitely check out Casetify for your new favorite phone case. If you want to support my channel and get a little money off yourself, you can click the link down below or go to casetify.com slash plants for 15% off your order. Next thing, this is something that I have been so scared to do for a very long time, but I think that it's time. I'm going to repot my Hoya Linearis. I have never repotted this plant because I was so scared. Um, uh oh, hold on, I'm getting a call. Leaving out of Kansas City right now, so I'll probably be there around like one ten. All right, I will see you around then. I'm getting a delivery of a really big mirror. But anyway, I've never repotted this plant because I have been so scared that I would ruin it, like it would die on me or something. But um, there is a little bit of like Dela tanks in the bottom because when I originally got it, there was just like so much peat moss in it, so. I didn't, I don't know. Like I remember I did something to it a long time ago. I don't remember, but I'm just opening this up and I'm seeing like uh, pumice. <laughs> that's definitely not from who I bought it from. So anyway, uh, that's that's good news. I don't always reuse soil, but if I know that it's De La Tanks, I will reuse it sometimes. It also depends on how old the soil is. But sometimes people ask if you can reuse soil the answer is, yeah, you technically could, but I don't know if you always should. So 
So yeah, that's my answer. <laughs> with a plant like this with so many vines too, it's kind of difficult to get a good amount of soil at the top of the plant. So what I normally do is I'll just like kind of put it on messy on the top and then I'll get the water and like clean it off and fix it up so that it's a little bit better. But as you can see, there's just so much going on here and I wanna be like extra delicate with this plant because it's come so far in its development and I wanna protect it with my life. So, okay, I just put like a messy layer on top there and hopefully when I take it to the sink and water it, it will be still happy with me. I'm so nervous about this plant though, you guys. Like, I'm really nervous right now, but it'll be okay. I've got this Syndapsis Pictus from Hewitt Garden Center in Nashville. And I am stoked. Oh yeah, I'm even more stoked because look at that root system. Whoops, you can't see it. Can you see it? That looks amazing. Honestly, I'm always a little nervous about buying a plant like this, like sort of like a pothos vining plant because they're so easy to propagate and so often I'll buy these and it's just like a bunch of like not very developed loose cuttings plopped into a pot together, which is fine, but I just feel like, I don't know, maybe that plant shouldn't have been sold yet until it had like a more cohesive root system, but this one is perfect. And when I go to the garden center later, I'm going to Vintage Hill later to do some filming for them. I'm gonna see if I can get more of this type of pot. It's a six inch terracotta pot, but it's like really shallow. And I find that that is so much better than like a tall terracotta pot like these ones. They're just so much easier to use. And like there isn't a ton of extra soil in the pot. And I feel like the plants always really appreciate that because they'll dry out a little faster. It's just a little easier on the roots, I find. So, okay, pop that in. Oh, this is a match made in heaven. I mean, it is a terracotta pot and it'll look good with pretty much everything, but this is a good pot size for it. I think this is a great decision. Good job on me. <laughs> this one, I also just kind of put some soil at the top. There's so much going on that it's like kind of hard to get the soil close to the middle here. So I just kind of threw some in there and when I water, hopefully it'll all settle in. Beautiful. <laughs> I love it. That's gonna look so good on the wall. Oh shoot. I wanted to combine this with that plant. Maybe I won't. This is like super ugly. <laughs> Well, I don't really have, like I have more things to repot, but I don't wanna put it in like the, these tall terracotta pots because I just feel like it'll be too big. So what I'm gonna do is, here's my micans, and I'm gonna combine this with a micans that I recently bought and repot it in this pot that I made. I made this in a DIY video, but you know what? I think this will even be too big. Yeah, I think that'll be too big. Okay, I think that I need to do some thinking and organizing my plants and figure out yeah, what I need to do because I need more of those shallow pots. So I think I'm gonna leave the repotting there because I'm sure that this is kind of long as it is. So I'm gonna leave it there and hopefully I'll be back with another repotting video. I was actually planning on this being my last repotting video of the year, but that's obvious that that's not gonna be a thing. <laughs> because there's so much left to do and so much left that I need to repot. So I might do some pot roulette and figure out something so that I have some extra pots like this size. So anyway, thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me on this sort of like casual repotting video. I always love hanging out with you guys and hope that you're having a wonderful holiday season and don't forget to check out Casetify. Just click the link down below or go to casetify.com slash plants for 15% off your next purchase. All right, I will see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>
Thank you.